Charles Neiman yesterday. Can you tell us why he did that? Not really, no. Uh, it's surprising decisions to me as well, perhaps to some extent. But also, I respect his his choice not to to talk about it and if someone from team mangus you talk discord? about it, it's oh what am i supposed to read discord mm, yeah i i suspected that, that of course so uh resigning yesterday was that not something he had talked about with uh, you again uh well it, it didn't come as a surprise to me let's put it like that but yeah. uh, again it's uh, i i i mean i'm employed by magnus and i think it's important to respect the, the, the privacy uh, he has as, as a coach and the sort of confidentiality in talking to me. So uh, I'm not really going to tell you anything there. Yeah, <laughs> I did suspect that. I will also ask you, though, are you suspecting Hans Niemann of cheating? Uh, again, it's not something I have thought a lot about. Um, I'm known to be the last one to realize these things. I am, I'm famous for having written uh, a chess yeah, column where I know, say that it doesn't look like uh, Fella was cheating at the Chess Olympiad, which he obviously was and was caught. So I generally try to expect the best of, of people. That's nice to hear. Now, uh, Peter, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what what is this <laughs> this, is, this is pretty funny I, I mean this is pretty funny actually there's not much you can say about this situation and you guys can hear it right i think sound uh, is good what magnus uh, is doing so can i ask you regardless of that situation the whole world is just talking about cheating in chess so in general do you think cheating is a big problem in chess well, it's a big problem in the sense that uh, we don't know if it's widespread, how widespread it is. It's a problem that we don't know are we capable of uh, detecting it or not. Mm, um, true. Well, uh, my true, very first true. world championship uh, as a second was 2005, where I was uh, Vichy Arnon's coach in uh, San Luis in Argentina. And uh, there was uh, pretty wild speculation when Topalov won the tournament and started with six and a half out of seven and uh, well that people some people said it openly even as far as i remember um and well it's been an ongoing theme and it's going to be bigger bigger obviously with computers becoming stronger and and, and smaller so mm -hmm. that is is quite a thing i've also with, with he, he's interesting... not wrong by the way just to pause for a second to give you guys some context i i might have the year wrong but i think it was 2005 there was uh there was essentially the equivalent of a canada's tournament at the time but because the world championship the world they were just getting like a united world a United World Champion at the time, uh, this candidates tournament, was, which had 14 players, or not 14 players, sorry, uh, I think it, it still had seven, I think it had seven or eight players, uh, eight, eight players, right? So you play others. Yeah, so it was eight players, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And um, and the winner of that tournament was considered the World Champ. So Topov started off with six and a half out of seven. And I remember this very well, San Luis and Argentina. And the reason I, I mean, I remember this very well because at the time, like, there was a lot of speculation. Like, there were people who were saying that, like, Topolov, he was playing every round at, like, the same board. So there might be something with, like, the board or something, whatever, because he was always playing at the same board. So after, I think, like, round seven or eight, they switched it so he wasn't playing on the same board. That's the first thing. Um, but I, I think I even I think there were a lot of GMs who were saying this like something seemed seemed off. Of course, again, nothing 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 happened obviously. But he is right when he brings this up. Uh, and the irony to this, by the way, the thing that makes this really funny is that I think one year later, I think it was two thousand six or two thousand seven, Vladimir Kramnik and Veselin Topolov played a world championship match, and in that match, Topolov accused Kramnik of cheating when he went to the restroom. So it's pretty funny actually, because uh, the, the, it's like Topolov gets accused and then he accuses someone else, and it's just yeah. Pretty pretty good stuff. So let's keep going. Uh, interest, for instance, seen uh, Ken Regan's uh, interviews and, and podcasts and, and things like that. But, uh, well, obviously, it's a pity if that becomes the narrative of chess. Like, for instance, uh, for quite a while, uh, for cycling, it was the narrative that people was debating that. And uh, that, of course, is not a, a ideal. But, well, it is... Not a mm -hmm. new topic in chess. It's been going on for, for a long time, no doubt about true. that. I mean, 2005 with uh, Topalov, then the Kramnik-Topalov uh, match, for instance, but there is numerous examples. Uh, hi, Peter. Um, hi. One, thing, one thing chess has taught me is to always keep an open mind, not to rush to conclusions, but I guess it's been an emotional time for everyone. There's lots of people on social media side taking sides right now. I mean, yeah, what would you say to them? I mean, people who are 
maybe criticizing Magnus or people who are the opposite, who are um, kind of assuming that there is evidence and nothing's been shown so well, far? Well, it, it's, it's normal that uh, it becomes an emotional topic and a, an important topic. This was also the mm -hmm. case uh, when we have seen similar discussions in, in, in the past, is, is my opinion. Um, I don't have much to, 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 to say to them. They will probably find other people to, to talk about. It seems like a, a subject a lot of people are willing to talk about, actually. And uh, that's uh, it's good. It's something that should be uh, debated in, in the chess world. No doubt about it. True. Absolutely. Do you think uh, FIDE and uh, tournament organizers, are they doing enough? It's hard to say. It's not an... Uh, I mean, I think we do face a problem that no one is a full expert of every aspect of it. I mean, uh, Ken mm. Reagan, for instance, is an amazing statistician, and he has done, I mean, I'm sure he's the leading expert uh, on the subject. When he talks about statistics, it's extremely hard for me to follow and understand the things, because he's an expert, and most chess grandmasters uh, barely have uh, education, because <laughs> we actually have to care about... <laughs> oh my god, did he really just say that, by the way? That is hilarious. Oh my gosh. It's extremely hard for me to follow and understand the things because he's an expert and most chess grandmasters uh, barely have uh, education because we actually had to care about chess. <laughs> oh my God, that is so classic. Yay! That is so good. Oh man, oh man. <laughs> so hey, you guys, we're, we're, we're all uneducated. So it's kind of funny actually, because the way that he says that, you know, there's a good old myth that everybody's aware of, which is, you know, chess players were geniuses who were like, were really, really smart. And here he is saying, he's saying, yeah, chess players have no education. That's great. Let's keep going. While some of the chess thoughts he has is uh, not genuinely accurate, in, in my opinion. And I think, well, uh -huh. I think we lack uh, expertise on, on this field that covers uh, all angles together in a way. And um, uh, it's, it's a subject that, I don't know much about, to be honest. Generally, I'm happy to try and be an expert on everything. But uh, this one is very complicated for, for me. And uh, I think, I mean, Reagan does a very good job of trying to explain uh, certain things. But, well, if his methods works and things like that, I, I'm simply not capable of understanding it. I don't have enough knowledge of it. And uh, that's, of course, a problem if um, people don't feel that they understand the, the topic properly. Yeah, that's a good point. Now, um, my final question hmm. on, on this topic. So the chess world is screaming for some... So, so let me pause for a second just to explain. Basically, as, as I understand what Peter is saying, and of course, I can talk about Ken Regan as well and what, what he's doing. Um, what Peter is essentially saying in plain English, it's, it's very straightforward. He's saying that statistically, there's nothing that stands out in terms of the moves or the games. But because Ken Regan is not a strong, strong chess player or grandmaster, there's certain moves or certain sort of... Um, uh, the, the way that you come to certain conclusions about moves or sequences of moves is something that Ken Regan cannot understand because he's not a strong enough chess player. That's what he's saying. So he's saying he's saying that essentially statistically there might be nothing there. But Ken, while well, uh, well, Ken Regan is an ex expert statistically, he is not an expert on the chess likes. He's not he's not a strong enough chess player. So there's some aspect there that's missing. That's what he's saying um, in, in plain English. That's that's very clearly what he's saying. Even if he's trying trying not to. Ken Regan is a. Um, I believe he's a professor at the University of Buffalo, if I'm not mistaken. He's, a, he's an amateur chess player who has done a lot of statistics uh, around, around cheating. But again, we'll get to all that a little bit later on. Answers. Will we hear from Magnus Carlsen? Do you know if there is a plan for him to make a comment on uh, the situation? No, I, I, I don't know. And I, well, if I know, I wouldn't, wouldn't tell you probably. <laughs> but, uh, <no. laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> this just keeps getting better and better. Hey, I mean, if I know, I'm still not going to tell you anything. That, that's up to, 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 to Magnus, uh, I think. So um, uh, I'm not planning to, to ask him. And then I'm trying to help him as, as well I can with, uh, mm -hmm. with, with the, the chess. Uh, and uh, well, that, that side is good doing okay at the moment is my impression. Yeah. And that's not the only drama around Magnus Carlsen this year. Obviously, a few months ago, he announced he's not going to play the next World Championship match. What was your reaction when he told you? Uh, well, that he told me and the team over a long period. I mean, uh, even before mm. we started preparing for the match, he told me that most likely this is going to be the last one. So I was, uh, I mean emotionally prepared for that and uh, if anything I tried to enjoy the match more uh, 
simply because I understood that uh, this has been a huge part of my life and something that's incredibly interesting, and this might be it. So, and he also told it to the team, and I think we all had this idea that, um, well, this is the last time with the uh, with with the guys, and um, let's try and enjoy it, let's try and have hmm. fun, and obviously let's try and win as well. But um, putting that aside, I think we tried to have a, a extra nice time. Hmm. Well, of course, it was not. Uh, sort of definitive decision from Magnus, so you never know. So you can argue that maybe there was a bit of relief when you finally knew, uh, in, mm. in a way. Maybe that, well, I felt very sure he was not going to change his mind, but everybody else in the world seems to think that he was uh, bluffing. So at least it was uh, good that the, the rest of the world had their view corrected, so we could talk about the same thing in, in that way. True, but, true. Well, obviously, it's... Um, for chess, it's kind of sad that both uh, <laughs> looking in the at me, <laughs> with Kuyo Fan or in the open section with Magnus, that the strongest chess player in the world chooses not to play the world championship. Um, that's not how it ideally should be, but uh, uh -huh. I understand both their decisions uh, and obviously Magnus's as well. Yeah. And uh, now in uh, this tournament, Julius Bear Generation Cup, his next game is against Vasily Vanshuk starting in a few seconds. That is a uh, very cool matchup. The chess world is really <laughs> looking forward to that. What do you think, Peter? Well, incredibly. I mean, I was Magnus second. Uh, I've forgotten Linares maybe 16 years ago. And he had some amazing games with Ivanchuk, who would completely outplay Magnus strategically. And Magnus would hang in there, and Ivanchuk would be absolutely frustrated and <laughs> not managing to, to win these games. And maybe he even lost to one of them. I mean, people can look them up in their database. I mean, these were great clashes. And that they now play again, um, you know, half a life later for Magnus is, is uh, amazing. And, uh, well, it really warms my heart that uh, Ivanchuk is getting to play here. He gets to play some tournament because we all know that he's uh, locked <clears throat> inside with his country due to the, 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 the tragic situation there. So, I mean, I'm very happy to see Ivanchuk do, doing well. And I even well, brought a shirt to, to support him. Although, of course, as Magnus coach, I have to hope that Magnus does well in this actual game. And we can see now that uh, Ivanchuk has played uh, pawn d4 in his first move. What kind of a plan do you and Magnus have in this game? <laughs> I think generally my concept uh -oh. is that uh -oh. when, C4 I play, resigns? when my, the guy I'm coaching plays Ivanchuk, I'm not capable of predicting what Ivanchuk <laughs> does. I think uh, one points with yeah. Lucian and then... Anyway, C4 was played in the game, by the way. It, it, it was played. I mean, I can move my cam for a second just so you guys can see it. But yeah, C4 was played in the game, which is pretty funny. Um, <laughs> let me just go back to so you guys can... Uh, let me go forward. So you, can, you guys can see the board, actually, because it was like right here. One second. Oh, apparently, I went back too far. So, yeah, just so you see the of board. Of course, as Magnus coach, yeah. I have to hope that Magnus does well in this actual game. <laughs> and we can see now that uh, Ivanchuk has played uh, yeah. pawn d4 in his first move. What kind of a plan do you and Magnus have in this game? I think generally my concept is that when I play, uh, when my, the guy I'm coaching plays Ivanchuk, I'm not capable of predicting what c4 Ivanchuk does. c4 is a brilliant does. move, I think, yeah. Uh, one points with Vishian and then uh, in Bilbao in a tournament. I checked that Ivanchuk had played 15 different openings. Anyway, anyway. C4. So I prepared something for everything. And he played opening number 16 against Vichy. And after that experience, I just realized I cannot predict Ivanchuk. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's life. So are you just going to lean back now, uh, Peter, and enjoy this great game between two uh, legends? I think so. I think this is a game that should be enjoyed for, for a lot of reasons. So yeah. I will mm -hmm. do that. Definitely. Uh, Peter, thank you so much for joining us and uh, sharing your thoughts. We really appreciate it. You're welcome. Take good care. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, actually, I should probably, I should, I really, I should leave my cam over here because probably most of the clips are going to have like some kind of chessboard in them. So I'll leave it here until I have to change it. But um, yeah, so, so essentially, as, as I see it, I mean, he, not, not a whole lot is said. Um, not a whole lot is said in general about like what is believed or isn't believed. But the one thing I will, the one thing, my, the, my one takeaway from this interview with Peter Heine Nielsen ab about the whole situation is, is that there is definitely something that he's unsure about because he refers to Ken Regan. He talks about what was said now, again, for context, for people who are wondering, Ken Regan, as I said, he's a professor at University of Buffalo statistician. Uh, he essentially is the foremost, foremost expert on, on cheating in chess. I, I guess you could say at the time, at the moment, it's not something where we have a lot of people who are doing it to be, to be completely fair. Cause it takes a lot of time. It's a very thankless task. You, you don't get paid or anything like that. Um, 
So he, he is the foremost expert on it, but it's very clear that Peter, he's saying there is that while there's nothing statistically, there are certain things on the chess side that don't add up. That's, that's how I view it very, 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 uh, very clearly in plain English. That's how I view it. But isn't Ken Regan an IM? Ken Regan is an IM. He, he is a very strong player, obviously, but that's not, it's, it's not comparable to Super GM. Um, so that's, that's my general read is that basically Peter's saying that there's certain things that you just can't understand at a certain level. That, that's that's what he's saying um plain and simple plain and simple um so yeah it's it's a good interview obviously it's uh not not a whole lot of set objective that's the only real takeaway that i have there uh in general terms um he, yeah he's educated so he's not a real chess player very funny you guys very very funny <laughs>